Sumerians, the fall of the first cities. Are the Sumerians the main contenders for the title Cradle of Civilization? Would it surprise you to know that every single day you use something invented by them? So who were these incredible people? Where did they come from? And what happened to them? The word Mesopotamia comes from the ancient Greek meaning the land between two rivers. The first settlers here didn't speak Greek. In fact, it would be thousands of years before the Greeks stepped foot on this land. The Sumerians lived on the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. They lived in the southernmost part of the land over 7,000 years ago. This was a time when woolly mammoths still wandered the earth. To this day, we still don't know where they came from. They called themselves Sagiga which means black-headed ones. They may have come from Turkey, India, Bahrain, or somewhere else, perhaps from a land that had been taken by the ocean during the Great Flood. There was another great settlement in the north of Mesopotamia where the Akkadian people lived. Their language had similar words to Aramaic and other languages of the region, but the Sumerian language was different. It was an isolate, meaning it had no relation to any other language. They thrived for 2,000 years and then vanished. Wherever they came from, their impact on the world is simply astonishing. The Birth of Civilization Settling in Mesopotamia was not an obvious choice. The land in the south was very dry, but the melting snow in the mountains caused the rivers to flood every year. That flooding allowed the soil along the banks of the river to become very fertile. The Sumerians learned how to harness the water and make it do what they wanted. They built levees to hold back the floods and cut canals to channel the river water to their fields. In other words, they invented irrigation. That meant that there was more land to be farmed, more crops planted so more people could be fed. They invented the plow to make farming more efficient. This was when teamwork and communities came together. That on its own would have been plenty impressive, but it was just the start of their technological revolution. They found clay on the banks of the river and shaped it into pots and bowls. Have you ever wondered who invented the wheel? It was the Sumerians. The origins of dividing an hour into 60 minutes and each minute into 60 seconds can be traced back to them. They were great mathematicians and invented multiplication. They invented geometry and used angle calculation to become great architects and town planners. They give us 360 degrees in a circle and 12 inches in a foot. They harnessed the wind using cloth to make their boats move more efficiently and invented the sail. They planned their year according to the moon and it became a lunar calendar. Legend has it that one day a king was giving orders to a messenger but the list was so long the messenger couldn't remember it. The king, in his frustration, grabbed a lump of clay and drew pictures on it with a reed to represent what he needed. He had invented writing. Whether the story is true or not, the fact remains that the Sumerians had one of the earliest writing systems known as cuneiform or wedge-shaped symbols. The clay tablets would be dried in the sun to preserve the text. Hundreds of thousands of tablets have survived, giving us a window into the Sumerian world. Writing caught on and the Sumerians' neighbors, the Akkadians, also started using it around 2500 BC. The people of Sumer had a legal system and wrote stories for pleasure. The Legend of Gilgamesh is a 3,000-line Mesopotamian epic poem that follows the adventures of a Sumerian king from Uruk. It is one of the earliest pieces of grand literature. Gilgamesh is a demigod who battles monsters in his quest for eternal life. Academics now think the character may be based on an actual king who served Uruk. They had religion and were devoted to their gods. Each city had a step pyramid-like temple for their gods called a ziggurat, and each city had its own human-like god. Ziggurats were made of mud bricks and took years to build. The finest remaining example is the ziggurat in Ur. There is evidence of great architecture. There were no forests for wood, so homes were made from reeds and mud brick. They worked out how to construct arches. The cities grew. The largest city in Sumer, the world at that time, was Uruk with a population of between 40 and 80,000. 
They wrote music down as well as instruction on how to tune their instruments. We are able to hear the same music the Sumerians would have listened to in their town centers. Hurrian Hymn Number no. 6 is probably the oldest musically noted song. Trade If the Sumerians wanted something they didn't have, they set off to get it and so established the very first trade networks. They traveled by land and sea in search of copper from Dilmun, what is now Bahrain, Turkey and Lebanon for cedar wood, India for gold and gems. Their artwork and jewelry shows that they loved the blue of lapis lazuli and went to Afghanistan to collect it. The clay tablets have referred to two other lands called Magan and Meluha, which may be Egypt and Ethiopia. As their knowledge of the world grew, so did their ambitions. The achievements of the people of Sumer is astonishing, but they were by no means perfect. They were the first to create a class system. The divide between rich and poor was huge. The rich used slaves to do their work for free, so they became even richer. They still had time to fight, too. Love thy neighbor. Or maybe not. Sumer wasn't one country. It was a collection around a dozen city-states, each one surrounded by a wall. Even though the cities had so much in common and were homes to some of the most brilliant minds, they were sadly nearly always in a state of conflict with each other. The first recorded border dispute we know of was sometime around 2450 BC, when King Eanatum of Lagash defeated the rival state of Uma. To mark the victory, Eanatum built a limestone monument called the Stele of the Vultures, which shows birds feasting on the flesh of fallen enemies. This is currently held in the Louvre in Paris. He conquered several city-states and for a time took over the whole of Sumer. These periods of unity were always brief and only lasted for the duration of the king's life. The Last King of Sumer The story of the fall of the Sumerians is as legendary as their achievement. Their last king, Lagalza Gesi, also unified Sumer and called himself the king of all nations. His victory over the other cities was hard won and his methods went against the Sumerian rule of civilized warfare, but in the end, they accepted him as their ultimate king. He made Uruk the capital city. He then went on to conquer Akkad in the north, Elam, which later became part of Persia and parts of Assyria. Things were going really well for him. He probably thought he was invincible and could rest on his laurels. But then he came across a young man called Sargon and everything changed. According to legend, Sargon of Akkad was born in secret to a priestess. She couldn't keep him, so made a reed basket and set him adrift down the river. Does that sound familiar? The parallels with the Bible story of Moses don't end here. Sargon was found by a laborer who raised him, but when growing up he was visited by the goddess of love, storms, and warfare who took him under her wing. She told him that he would be great one day and lead a nation. Sargon was said to be very handsome and charismatic. He was picked from obscurity to be the cupbearer of the king of Kish. This was a great job and put him right in the center of the decision-making. He ended up overthrowing the king and then went after Lugal Zagesi. There was a lot of bad blood towards the Sumerian king in the cities he had defeated and they may not have been too helpful in the fight against Sargon. When Sargon did capture him, he put a heavy frame around his neck and led him through the streets on a leash to humiliate him. Sargon tore down the Sumerian city walls and sent governors to rule them. Up to that point, Sumerians had been bilingual, speaking their own language and Akkadian. Sargon banned Sumerian, and Akkadian was the official language of the country of Mesopotamia. The First Emperor Sargon encouraged trade in exchange for wool and olive oil. He used taxes collected from merchants to pay soldiers, artists, and scribes. The Akkadians had always been outshone by their super smart neighbors, but they learned from them and with the help of an ambitious, intelligent leader, outmaneuvered them to become their masters. Empire builders around the world have done the same. The Romans conquered the brilliant Greeks, and the Mongols took China. Sargon ruled for over 50 years and founded a dynasty, something the brilliant Sumerians were never able to do. What do you think of the Sumerian firsts? Is there another contender for the cradle of civilization? Please let us know and leave your comments below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can stay up to date with our latest content.